Well, last month's Take One newsletter featured a profile on viewer Brenda Parcel. Parcels have been faithfully watching TV44 since the beginning, which means their daughter Katrina grew up doing the exact same thing. Jennifer is with Katrina Forsyth, who is now the, the State Director of Child Evangelism Fellowship of Illinois. Jennifer? Thanks, Mark. I'm joined in the studio by a incredible woman who grew up right here in this area watching TV44. I venture to guess that possibly it could have been part of her upbringing for her Christian training, but my goodness, she has gone far and beyond uh, doing great things for Christ right here, other than right here just in West Central Ohio. Katrina Forsyth is joining us. Katrina, thank you so much for being with us. I'm so glad to be here. People years ago may have known you better as Parcel. You're, yes, you are Katrina Parcel. That was from my, the Upper uh -huh. Sandusky area. Your parents have been viewers of our station as long as it has existed. Mm -hmm. um, so you are originally from Ohio, correct? Yes, we, I grew up in Forest, Ohio. And so the nearest uh, city after that is Upper Sandusky and the ne nearest big city after that is Finley, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm a farmer's daughter. And so we didn't really live in the city. We lived in the country. So. Well, let's talk a little bit about not just Child Evangelism Fellowship, of which you are the state director in Illinois, but let's go way back to the beginning. Um, your mom didn't grow up a Christian. She became a Christian and knew right from the start that her children needed to hear mm -hmm. the, word of, of the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And CEF obviously is connected to there. Tell me a little bit about that starting testimony. Well, I was three years old when I, when I went to my first Good News Club with Child Evangelism Fellowship. And as a child, from my perspective, there was never a time when I didn't know the name of Jesus. I mean, and from my understanding as a child, I mean, I always knew the Bible. I always knew John 3, 16. And, and that's great because I can pass down that heritage to my children. But as you said, my mom uh, didn't have that opportunity. She went to church, but she never heard a clear presentation of the gospel. She was taught, you know, do this, do that, or when you get older, you know, you can do this. And, but she never heard that she can trust in Jesus by faith and loan for the forgiveness mm -hmm. of her sin. And so when she came to know the Lord through a Billy Graham crusade, and this was back in the 1970s, and um, she just, like you said, she just had an overwhelming desire, like, Lord, the children need to hear. And, and so it was kind of a, a story in, in that self how that happened, but a missionary who lived just less than four miles from my home where I grew up in Forest, Ohio, she just happened to be on furlough because her mother was ill and her name was Margaret Ann Bash, this missionary, and she served with Child Evangelism Fellowship. Of course, I didn't know all that. I mean, I heard all this later, but when she was here on furlough in Ohio, um, she decided not to be idle. She decided that she wanted to serve the Lord. She couldn't be in Eastern Europe, you know, reaching boys and girls for Christ, so she wanted to reach children for Christ in Northwest Ohio, and that's exactly what she did. And she started a Good News Club in her home, and I was part of that first Good News Club and the Lord was working in my heart, and about a year later, um, different things happened, including I lost my grandpa at a very early age, and that's one of the first memories I have in my life. Mm -hmm. And I started asking questions like, you know, where's heaven, and how do you get to heaven, and, you know, you know who's Jesus? And, and I really was growing in my understanding. And so by the time I was four years of age, I know that sounds very young, mm -hmm. but I know that children can come to know Christ mm -hmm. because I did, and that's a testimony in my life. And so um, CF, I've known about, a lot of times people ask me, they say, well, what's CEF? I've never heard of CF before. And I kind of look at them, I think, are you from the moon or something? Because to me, I grew up with my whole life. And then after Margaret Ann went back to uh, Hungary and Austria, where she was serving at at that time, then my mom kind of took over as a volunteer. And so even before I went to school, uh, before I went to even kindergarten, my mom would take me from class to class because at that time in the 1970s, you could go into the public school and you could teach the Bible in the mm -hmm. public school mm -hmm. during the school day. And so and by the time I was in elementary school, and I remember when I was in sixth grade, my friends would even call my mom the Jesus lady <laughs> because, you know, you know, she would come and she would teach the Bible and they would kind of look, and it, it was kind of a hard thing to live up to when the, your, your friends are calling your mom the Jesus lady and they're like, <laughs> are, you know, you're, you, you must love Jesus too. So, so that's how I grew up. So. And I, your mom is wonderful when she comes and visits at the TV station. It's such a joy for me to be able to talk with her because the joy of the Lord is still so evident in yeah. her life. The CEF, um, I know, Katrina, you would say this is not about you, this is about the Lord, but it inspires me to realize how even at the age of four, God was mm -hmm. using that five-day club mm -hmm. to spark 
what would become your entire life. It was a simple gospel message. You know, God loves you. You have sin. Mm -hmm. Jesus, God's son, died on that cross for you. If you believe and trust in him as your savior, mm -hmm. he can forgive you of your sin and give you the gift of everlasting life. It's a simple, yeah. you know, theologians, that I, I've been to Bible school. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I got my graduate. I'm even working my doctorate right now. And theologians will, will spend the rest of their life trying to figure out the gospel because it's a mystery, but yet it's simple enough for a child to understand. Yeah. And that's the way God made it to be. Well, let's fast forward. You're a little bit older than four. Not too much older, just a little bit. Um, plus 40, yeah. <laughs> a lot of incredible things God has used you in your life. You've been uh, in various locations, but you've been in Illinois for the past 14 years, working as the state director mm -hmm. of Illinois CEF. Tell me a little bit about that part of your life. But after uh, Bible school and graduate school, I ended up going full time with CF in 93 in South Carolina. And I served there as a local director. And then I was asked to come to Illinois because the state director was retiring at that time. Because CEF is in every state mm -hmm. in the United States. And um, some people don't realize it, but it's a, it's a huge, it's actually the world's largest children's ministry that is mm. exclusively for Bible Club. It's not like compassion or world vision, but because they do other things than, than the gospel, they do the gospel plus, you know, waters and blankets and things like that. But we're exclusively a Bible Club based ministry. And so we're the world's largest ex um, Bible Club ministry that focuses on reaching boys and girls in that way. But like you said, the, the past 14 years, I've been serving as a state director in Illinois. And um, we have a lot of different ministries that we do. We reach close to eight to 10,000 children every year with the gospel. And uh, very strong in the summertime doing back your Bible clubs. But in the school, we have what's called after school good news clubs. So that's some of our strong and our main ministries that we do. But in everything, it's to evangelize children, uh, to share with them that good news of the gospel in that simple way. Um, but in a clear way so they can understand. And it's not about our presentation of the gospel. It's the Holy Spirit who is working in the mm -hmm. life of that child and wooing them and drawing them and giving them that understanding of why they need Christ and who Jesus is. And it's not their righteousness. There's nothing that they can bring to the table. It's all because of what Jesus did on that cross for them. Wonderful. And then we want to teach those children. We don't want to just, okay, there you go. Great. You believed on Jesus and bye. See you later. We want to disciple them. We want to have uh, weekly Bible clubs with them. But we also, um, a lot of people don't realize that our country is our youth are becoming very much. I just, I just uh, uh, came across this poll that the millennial uh, generation, children that are born after 1980s, are the most irreligious generation mm. that there has ever been in the history of the United States. Mm. And a lot of people are saying that this generation of children that are growing up right now are the most illiterate generation when it comes to the scriptures. Wow. Uh, wow. Like a lot of times we go into fair ministries and we share the gospel using the five colors of the wordless book. I'm not sure. Yeah. Many of your viewers have seen that gold yeah. stands for heaven, dark for sin, mm -hmm. red for the blood of Jesus, clean for forgiveness and green and growing. And we will share the gospel with them one-on-one -on -one, painting designs on their face or their hands. And maybe we're painting a, a ice cream cone on their face or uh, balloons, but we're sharing the gospel with them. And a lot of times when you come and you talk about what sin is, children don't even know what, what, what sin is. They never like sin. What's that? Yeah. Or, or when you start describing it's anything you think, say, or do that displeases God, they start saying, oh, yeah, well, that's for bad people. Mm -hmm. They don't understand because that bar of God's holiness, they don't see the God of the Bible because they don't know the God of the Bible. No one has mm -hmm. taught them the God of the Bible. So our, our children are really in need. Um, they actually say that, that uh, 70 to 80 percent of the children in the United States of America, in any given state, in any given community on average, are not born in a Christian home. 70 to 80 percent. But yet CEF still has an opportunity mm -hmm. to even get in the public schools. I know laws have changed, but yet there are still ways yes. to be connected. And there's a hook that could change that. Yeah, back when I was growing up, you could go like my mom was doing with Child Advancement Fellowship. Uh, they would go right into the public schools during the school day, but they had the parents' permissions. I mean, the parents would have to sign a piece of paper saying that mm -hmm. their child could be in religious education. And you still can do it during the school day. It's called release time education. Mm -hmm. And that's in some of the states like Oregon and Ohio is very strong in release time education. But the little thing that you have to keep in mind with that one, the children have to be during the school day taking off the school premises. Yeah. So you lose a little bit of time. So let's say you have a 45 minutes, or maybe you only have a half hour. If you had an hour, now you have 45 minutes. But the other way that you can do it is called After School Good News Club. Here in Ohio, I looked up some statistics when I was, when I was here visiting, um, and it, there are close to 200 schools 
that they are in in after school good news clubs. They're reaching close to 5,000 children right here in Ohio. These are, these are children in the public schools that we can have a Bible club there right after. And in Illinois, we have 70 schools that we're in. It's just a wonderful opportunity. Wonderful, so. wonderful. We will keep praying for you and for what you're doing, but so thankful for the the seeds that are being planted and look forward to getting to heaven someday and seeing all of the people who are there because of your work and the work of CEF. Excellent.